Abigail Forsyth started a coffee revolution in 2009 when she designed and launched the Keep Cup. Ten years on, over 8 million of the reusable cups have now been sold, preventing an estimated 12 billion disposable cups going into landfill. Abigail joins us now here on Your Money Live. Abigail, good evening to you. Um, the Keep Cup Empire actually had its origins in a cafe or sandwich chain that you ran with your brother. Tell us about that. That's correct. Uh, yeah, so Jamie and I uh, ran Blue Bag. We ran that in Melbourne for 10 years and behind the machine we saw the rise and rise of um, takeaway coffee and the waste that went with that. And for, um, we thought there must be a better way. There must be a better way to drink coffee on the go. So we designed Keep Cup. Although it was interesting to go back in time when you actually started running those cafes in the late 90s, pretty much uh, no one used takeaway cups, which is, it's hard to take our mind back that far. It feels like we always did it, right? Yeah, I still remember a lawyer saying to me, oh, I feel like a baby drinking out of a disposable cup and now we all do it. It's something that I guess it's become aspirational in a way. I think that's, that's slowly changing. Uh, but yeah, Jamie and I went around, we found a local manufacturer and we um, made Keep Cup and it's been made in Australia ever since. Yeah, tell us about the start of, of uh, that, that Keep Cup, um, getting that prototype product, that's always the big moment for any startup. I understand early on in the process you were told it was one of the stupidest ideas one designer had ever seen. Well, it was more that uh, uh, they said if you, if you can't sell the idea, if you can't explain why you would use this, it's just a plastic cup. And I think mm. there's still something in that, it, that it's about why you, it's selling the message of reduce and reuse, which we've been doing for the last decade. And it's fi we're finally now getting some momentum behind that. I mean, the world is moving to disposable free. Um, and it, it's, it's something people are, is top of mind for people. Yeah, ti the timing's interesting, isn't it? Because 10 years ago, when you were thinking about the Keep Cup, where were we at with how much disposable coffee cups we were using? And how's that changed over the 10 years? And where did that, the momentum for you really kick in? Uh, I, I don't think people really were thinking about it. And I think even we, we knew it was a problem, but we probably underestimated the scale of the problem when we, when the, we took the product global and saw what was happening around the world. Um, yeah, but I mean, the, there's been a lot of moments in the last two years that have woken people up to what's happening. There's David Attenborough's Blue Planet 2. Um, war on waste in Australia was a groundbreaking moment for us. And then um, at the beginning of last year, the UK government proposed the latte levy, which was a tax on disposable packaging, uh, which again made people think about what, what mm. was happening. Do you think we'll ever see disposable cups outright banned in Australia? I'd like to think so. I think the government could certainly give some stronger direction in, in product stewardship and, and, um, and disposable packaging. Mm. Although you mentioned things like the war on waste, um, which was an ABC series, and as you said, huge at the time. Everyone was talking about it. How do you, though, capitalise on those moments and keep that momentum going? Because it is, does feel like one of those things that gets picked up by social media. It's certainly a hashtag for a few days, but then it just dies down. Do you think? Oh, I don't know. Yeah, I, I, do. think it's, I think that uh, I think that the climate crisis and what's happening in the world is a stressor that is constantly on people now. People are worried about what's going to happen in the future. What's the world going to be like for our children? And that individuals need to stop, you know, reduce our consumption. Full stop. But then governments and businesses need to show some direction in how in product stewardship in their supply chain to reduce the amount of consumption there is yeah, in the I world. Think I think that I think you're touching what I mean. Like it's it's fine to have hashtags and you know a few people get on board, but unless it's followed through with something bigger than that, um, it it can potentially just remain quite restricted in terms of the number of people on board. If you know what I mean? Yeah, I think that. But I think um, as in, I mean, keep cups of business. Our business was predicated on individuals taking responsibility for the world that we want to live in in the future. And what mm. we've seen is that individuals can apply really strong pressure on businesses to, to change their ways. We've seen it with Coles, we've seen it with Woolies um, banning the bags. Um, and there, and there's, there's more things we can do to, to make the world a better place as consumers and drive businesses and governments to act. And how do you quantify that environmental impact that Keep Cup has had so far? Uh, it's, it's really challenging. We've tried in the past to sort of, we had a reuse HQ where we asked people to pledge not to use a disposable and sort of aggregate those results. But, but the results belong to our customers and, you know, we're a really um, grassroots um, customer driven brand and we've grown from the advocacy of our consumers. So the results really belong to them, not us. And, and tell us about the global footprint at the moment. 
So we've got um, an op offices in the UK and our UK business has grown um, to the point where we've been able to um, put local manufacturing there, which is fantastic. Um, we've got a footprint in the US as well and um, we're, so we're representing 65 countries around the world. And if you're manufacturing in the UK, are you worried about the, the Brexit deadline which is looming within days? How would that affect the business? Well, because we're manufacturing in the UK for the local market, I guess it's just going to be how we interact with our European uh, customers will, could be a challenge. But, I mean, we've just got to wait and see. OK. And do you have plans to expand the range beyond cups? Um, that, are there other environmentally friendly products that you'd be thinking about? Uh, well, over one million disposable cups get discarded every minute around the world. So the job is still, um, we've still got a lot to do in, in, that, in that part of the business. My brother, Jamie Forsyth, who co-founded co um, Keep Cup with me, has now gone on to um, do a couple of other businesses. Beatbox, which makes a reusable salad container and um, I say regrant, it's not regrant, returner, which is about um, returning um, salad bowls and lunch bowls in, mm. in cafes. So it's more a rent and, and share mm. scheme. So, yeah. So that's kind of covered through the family then in some ways. <laughs> you know, we're doing our best. Yeah, but we can't do I mean, it alone. We're all in this together. You know, I think something that's interesting as well is, you know, you mentioned um, that you manufacture in the UK. That's a big market because I guess it, for some businesses, um, the natural instinct would be to say, if you're manufacturing, go into parts of Asia, like China or Bangladesh or, or these parts. But really, you kind of walk, well, you're definitely walking the walk because you, you definitely did not want to go into the, some of those markets for your manufacturing, did you? Yeah, well, I mean, we wanted to we, we wanted to walk the walk. If we're about reducing footprint and sustainability, and we're also to create a circular economy, you've got to have some local manufacturing so you can push those products back through and create mm. recycling programs. If you're doing it um, in China, say, and that's not your market, that's going to be a challenge. And I think as well, when we develop products where we have IP in the product and, you know, we're really design-led as a business, and having being able to get in the car and speak with your, the industrial designers, the tooling engineers and the manufacturers to improve your process and your product, that's just invaluable. Um, and, I, and now, you know, we have had to go to China for a couple of the products which are really only made in China now around the world. Like the glass probably can only be made in four factories around the world. Um, and it's difficult. It's difficult when you're dealing with cultural and language um, barriers and the sheer volume of products going through those factories. So in Australia, mm. we're an we're a important customer for our manufacturer, whereas in China, we're just a little... Abigail Forsyth, great to speak to you. We're looking forward to that tonight. Thank you very much. Have a great weekend. Thanks very much. Thanks.